Hi friends. Today we have a new Bible story. So last time we learned about Jesus when he was 12 years old. Well, today we have another character. He's going to talk about Jesus, but it's not Jesus. Though this character in our story is from the beginning stories that we've had this year. So if you think way back, we had the story of Elizabeth and Zechariah. And if you remember, Elizabeth was really, really old and she couldn't have babies anymore. But they really wanted a baby and God gave them that gift. But this baby would be special. This baby would be set apart. This baby would have a special job. And this baby's special job was going to be about Jesus. So let's listen to our story. Our story today is about John. And John was the son of Zechariah and Elizabeth. And when he was 30 years old, it came time for him to do the special work that God had set for him to do. So he's 30 years old and he is living out in the wild desert country. So maybe it's appropriate that I'm outside today because that's where John was. John was outside. So usually when we think about hearing about Jesus, we think about going to church in a building maybe and maybe the pastor but that's not where John had his church, if that's what you want to call it. John was out in the desert. Now remember, a desert. Does a desert have lots and lots of lush green trees with lots of fruit? No. He was in the wild. He was in the desert. Not much water. Not much plants. So um, he probably thought water was pretty, pretty precious, like we do. And then Zechariah knew John had a special job. And his job had been set apart since before his birth. His job was to go and tell people about Jesus. He really had two jobs. The first one was to show people their sin. Remember, that's all like those things that we do that we're not supposed to. Like God says, eh, I'm not supposed to do that. That was his first job. And then when people know that they're sinful, they know that they can't get to heaven on their own because they're sinful. So then they know that they need somebody. And that somebody they need is Jesus. So that was John's job. His job was to point out to people that they were sinful and then to tell people about Jesus. Now, John's ministry was near a river, which is probably good because there's not a lot of water in the desert. His ministry was by the Jordan River. So we kind of know how important rivers are, don't we? Especially in places that don't get a lot of rain. So do we have important rivers where we are? Kind of do, don't we? So you kind of understand. Why, that's why he chose that spot to tell people about Jesus. Because everyone would have to go to the river to get water. Very important spot. And so that's where he lived. Now, John, he, he wasn't a fashion, wasn't a fashionista. No, mm -mm. He, uh, he, he didn't wear the, the latest fashions. You wouldn't go see John if you wanted to see if you had a pretty outfit. No, because John... John wore rough clothing. It was made from camel hair. Think about a camel. Has anyone ever seen a camel? Maybe you even touched a camel or rode on a camel, maybe in a zoo or at a fair. They're not soft like a puppy. Mm -mm. They're not soft like a kitty or like a bunny. It's kind of rough. That's what he wore for his clothes. So it was probably itchy and scratchy and not very comfortable. And it didn't look very great. And then around his waist he wore a leather belt. And then he ate the things he found in the desert. 
Well, we know a lot of things don't live out in the desert. So he ate locusts. That's a grasshopper. I'm not going to eat a grasshopper. Mm -mm. Not unless I guess I was really, really super hungry and starving. And honey. No, I like honey. But I don't think I'd like it with grasshoppers. And that's what he ate. Um, but that isn't really what made John different. It wasn't his clothes. It wasn't his food. It was what he did. He told people about their sins and that they needed a savior, that they needed Jesus. We all need Jesus. And that's what he told people. He would tell them, you are sinners. He didn't beat around the bush, did he? He told them flat out, you are sinners. That's what he told the people. He said, you have made God angry with your sinning. Repent. So that means realize that what you're doing is wrong and say you're sorry and I'm going to try my very hardest never to do it again. Be sorry for your sins. Turn away from them. Believe in the Savior. Now they've all heard about the Savior. The Savior is the one that God promised to save them from their sins. So turn to God. Ask Him to forgive you of your sins. Now, lots and lots of people would come and listen. They would listen to God. Listen to John talk about God and talk about their sins. And there would be great big crowds. And many of the people there, that's a bee guy, not a locust. And a lot of the people there would believe in Jesus. And they'd ask to be baptized. And they were sorry for their sins. And they said, we need a Savior. We need Jesus. But there were some people not why they came. They were trying to be sneakies. Yeah. And that was not why they came. But John was so smart. Oh, yes. He told them, you are poisonous snakes. Poisonous snakes is what he called them. We know what poisonous snakes are, don't we? They're not something we would want to be called. No. Um, you pretend that you are afraid of what God says. You are, pretend that you are afraid of God. You pretend that you've turned away from your sins, but you haven't. Go. But the other people, the people who loved God, the people who saw that their sins, that they were sinful, and, and saw that, that they had sins that needed to be forgiven, they went to John and they said, what do we have to do? How do we show God that we are sorry for our sins? And so God told them, help people who need it. To the tax collectors, he said, be honest. Only take what you're supposed to. And to the soldiers, he said, don't take things from by force. Um, be satisfied with what you are given. So those are things that he told them to do. Now, will those things save you? Will being honest save you? Will being honest get you to heaven? No. Will being satisfied get you to heaven? Well, being helpful, well, that'll get you to heaven, right? No. There's only one way to heaven, and we can't do it. We are sinful. There is nothing that we can do that can get us to heaven. Because I have been sinful. I have been sinful from my, before I was born. I have been sinful. And I know, I have heard people say, well, a baby can't be sinful. Really? Have you ever tried to feed a baby in a high chair? And what do they do with the food? Throw it on the floor. Yeah, babies can be sinful. But we inherited our sin. We inherited sin from Adam and Eve. So we already had sin. Sin before we were even born. We inherited sin because from the very beginnings, 
Adam and Eve sinned. So we have inherited sin. And then we sin every day. We sin every hour. We can't do it alone. So we do those things he said because we love God. We want to show God that we love him. We want to show him that we are thankful for what he has done for us. We want to say, thank you, God. Not because those things are going to get us to heaven. Because they won't. We can't do it. We want to do those things to show our love. To show our thankfulness. To say, thank you, God, because I know I can't do it on my own. I'll never be good enough. I'll never be honest enough. I'll never be satisfied enough. I'll never be helpful enough. I can't. I need you. But we do those things because we love God. We do. We love Him for what He's done for us. Now, when the people heard these things, they asked John, Well, are you the Savior? Are you going to save us from our sins? And John said, No, me? Oh, no. I'm just going to tell you about the one who can save you from your sins. It's not me. Um, I can't do it. But there's someone coming who is so much greater than I am. Someone whose sandals I am not even worthy to carry. Think about that. I'm not even worthy to carry his sandals. He's that wonderful. He's that perfect. Is that amazing? And that's Jesus. That is Jesus. It just sums it up. Um, so, what he says is he explains not just what's like happening now and, and like the near future when Jesus is starting his ministry. No, he's going to also tell us about what's going to happen at the very end, at the end times. So, we don't know when the end times are coming. The end times could come tomorrow they could come in a hundred years they could come in a thousand years we don't know but he says just like a farmer will gather the wheat into his barns so that would be like Jesus gathering all the believers those of us who believe in Jesus so just like a farmer gathers wheat and puts it in his barn Jesus is going to come and he's going to gather all his believers and he's going to bring us to heaven the most wonderful thing in the whole world heaven is so wonderful I can't even imagine it it's better than birthday parties and better than Christmas it's better than Disney World it's better than anything we can imagine better than the rodeo better than the state fair there's nothing as good as heaven but that's what Jesus is going to bring us that's what he just tells us that's what John tells the people Just like a farmer takes all the good wheat and puts it in a barn, Jesus is going to come and take all the believers and bring them to heaven. And then, what does a farmer do? He gets rid of all that bad stuff, right? We don't want the chaff. We don't want the parts we don't eat. So a farmer will gather that, and he will burn it. Well, that's what's going to happen to people who don't believe in Jesus. They're going to be gathered up too, but they're not going to go to heaven. They're not going to go to the most wonderful place that we can't even imagine it's so wonderful. No, they're going to go to hell. And they are going to live with flames that never stop burning. So if you've ever been burned before, and you know how that hurts and hurts and hurts and hurts and hurts, and it feels like that hurts never going to go away, well, the people in hell, it's like that. Except it never will go away. Because they'll be there forever. And the rest of us will be in heaven with Jesus forever. That's going to be so wonderful. So, Jesus told this to the people, but he didn't stop. He kept telling people about Jesus. He kept telling people about their sins. Up until the time he died. That's what he did. He told people about their sins and that they needed a Savior. And that Savior is Jesus. Well, do you know what? God gives us a job, too. He gives us part of that same job he gave to John. He said for us to go and tell. Go and tell. What are you supposed to go tell? 
Well, we're supposed to go and do and tell basically the same thing John did. Tell people about Jesus. Tell people about their Savior. Tell them that they don't have to worry when they die because they're going to go to the most wonderful place in the whole world, heaven. And that's your job. So tell people about Jesus. Tell everyone about Jesus. Tell your family members who don't know. Tell your neighbor. You can tell everybody about Jesus. And that's the job God gave you. Because everybody who can talk can tell people about Jesus. It doesn't matter if you're five, if you're 55, it doesn't matter if you're 100. That is a job we all can do. So go and tell everyone about Jesus.